last 20 years or so, fisheries research has changed dramatically, driven by the United Nations FAO, Fisheries and Agriculture Organisation, which is pushing an ecosystem approach to fisheries management instead of a single species, whatever the target species is, you don't re research that anymore, you research the entire system that species is a part of. And a lot of people still don't sort of get that. So at the recent fisheries conference in seafood industry conference in Queenstown a couple of weeks ago, um, I was asked if we could put together um, a website that gave a way of showing and demonstrating that. And a thank you to Catalyst, because they were the ones I got to do this. And I think they did a fantastic job. So that's the why. So what we wanted to do was highlight the ecosystem multi-species approach to research. We wanted to make it extremely interactive as much as we possibly could. It wasn't a passive website just looking at bits and pieces that sort of come and go. You were actually interacting with it as much as we could. We wanted maps, graphs, time series, a whole range of information displayed on it and the users can actually interact with. And the normal way of building any sort of website like that is a fairly complex hierarchy of pages for different species, for different aspects of information about those species that you have to navigate through. And you finish up lost in the maze somewhere of all that information. And that's something we wanted to avoid and I'm not aware of anyone else who's done anything quite like this, so if anyone is, I'd love to know more about it. We wanted to have as few pages as possible. And what's the smallest number of web pages you can have on a site? If you have a site, it has to have one page. And that was our goal, was to make everything up front visible and accessible from one web page. If anyone wants to play with it, it's there. I've only got a 10 minute slot, so I'm not gonna do a live demo. <laughs> but some screen caps. Essentially, there's a list of species here. As you mouse over the species, its data is highlighted on the graph. You don't need to navigate, click, do anything, it's automatic. You click a species, it becomes the active species, it will appear on the map, and it's highlighted on the graph. If you want to click Control click, you'll get a second species, you'll get two species, and you'll see that later, and you'll have two things to see. The blue one is, happens to be where the cursor is at the time. The black one has been selected. So essentially what you have there is you're looking at the species and looking at the data pertaining to species. What happens if you click on one of the data columns? You get a data-driven view of the species. And again, it's just there, it's very quick, very simple, and one web page. If we tab across to, say, the biomass trends, for the time series of surveys we're talking about here, there's 20 years worth of, 25 years worth of surveys on the Chatham Rise, which is between the Chathams and Banks Peninsula. For all the various species we've got here, this shows the estimated biomass from each year, each annual survey. So you can now see the trend of the biomass for any of those species. You can click on it to make it the selected species. You can move up and down to compare a different with it. So you can control click to have two and compare three of them. The map is now showing a difference of um, presence absence. So you can see where something not only where it was caught, where it wasn't caught. And one of the key things with species changes is not so much is it still there, it's where is it found now compared to where it was. The big changes in species occupancy, how much of the range it can occupy it does, and this allows us to get a quick handle on that. So there's biomass trends coming out of it. Presence absence on the map, <coughs> as I said before. So it's not just biomass, there's a map. And still, one page. As I mentioned before, two species. We have two species now selected and the interactive one mousing over. So primary species, secondary species and the mouse over. If you're mousing over the columns, you want to find out which one was the highest one in this column. As you mouse over that column, it will pick the line that you're highlighting. 
So it's not just a species, you can search and browse by data as well, completely interactively. This is now showing two species. Shovelnose spiky dog is relatively deep water, longnose chimera is even deeper, so we have presence of the two here. Sorry, it's, um, this is the, sh the, the dotted line is the secondary species, that's the white dots, which are hard to see on this background. But that's essentially a shallow water species, this is a deep water species, and as you can see here, there's the two species ranges. So we can compare two different species on the map, which again is unusual because normally these sites, you drill down to one species, you see its information, the ability to see multiple species is quite rare. Presence, absence, done that one. So we're still working on it, there's more to come. Um, Everyone's been very impressed with it and has fun playing with it. So it's very positive. Um, as I said, I'm not aware of anyone who's done anything quite like that before with that, that much information on a single web page without any sort of clicking d down to other links, etc. cetera. Um, where we do have links to our other websites, so we have the World Orders Register, so for individual species, if you go to the species link, there's a species page on there. There's a link to the worms page, which is in the species details, which I don't have any screen caps for. So that's basically it. Thank you, Catalyst. <laughs>